In this clip I will show you how you can solve an inequality where on one side you have a rational function and the other side you have the zero. Well, the problem here under consideration is find the set of all values x in R such that well, x plus 1 times x minus 2, which is a, is a quadratic term, divided by some quadratic function x minus 1 times x plus 2 is larger or greater or equal than 0. Well, the solution is as follows. We will look at the sign scheme on the left-hand side. So if we would know the sign of the numerator and the sign of the denominator, then we can find the sign of the complete term on the left-hand side, so the rational function. And if we know the sign scheme of the rational function on the left-hand side, we know for which values we have a positive sign and a negative sign. So we solve, we are able to solve this inequality. So let's have a look at the numerator and the denominator. First we look at the numerator, which is the term x plus 1 times x minus 2. Yeah, so here the green line represents the set of all reals. Then we see that the numerator vanishes at minus 1 and 2. These are the zeros of the quadratic term. And now we look at the sign of the numerator. So it's not hard to see that when we take large x's, so if we're on the right hand side of 2, then we have all positive terms. Yeah? So x plus 1 is positive and x minus 2 is positive, so the product in the right hand side of 2 is positive. So then on the right hand side of 2, we write a plus. Now, we jump over the 2 into the interval minus 1, 2, and look what happens. Well, on x plus 1 is still positive since we are on the right hand side of minus 1. x minus 2 now turns into a negative term, so we get a product of a positive term times a negative term, which results in a negative numerator. So we write a minus. Well, something similar happens if we jump over the root minus 1, then we end up with a negative x plus 1. So we get a negative term times a negative term, which equals a positive term. So we write a plus on the left-hand side of minus 1. Now something similar happens with the denominator. Right. So again, we have a quadratic function and we find the zeros at 1 and minus 2. So we can depict it on a kind of a real line. So this green line represents the reals again. And we get the zero of the denominator at minus 2 and 1. which we will now indicate by a dashed line, since the values 1 and minus 2 will never be a solution, right? So when the denominator equals 0, then we get a problem. But again, we can look at the sign. If we look to the right of 1, we see that x minus 1 and x plus 2 are positive. So the product of these two terms, x minus 1 times x plus 2, is positive. So we write a plus. By jumping over the, min over the 1, we get a minus sign on the interval minus 2, 1, and a positive sign on the left-hand side of minus 2. So now we may add up stuff and look at the fractions on the rational function on the left-hand side, or quadratic term, divided by a quadratic term. And we summarize by including the roots of the numerator at minus 1 and 2, and the dashed lines at minus 2, 1. Yeah. Now look to the right of 2. 
there we have a positive numerator and we divide it by a positive denominator. So the fraction as a whole is positive, so we write a plus. On the interval 1, 2, we divide something negative by something positive. So that leaves a negative fraction, so we get a minus sign, etc. etc. So we can complete the sign scheme as follows. Now we were interested in the solution of when the fraction on the left hand side is greater or equal than zero. Well, we may just read it from the last line of the sign scheme of the fraction. Yes, we look at all positive values. On the left hand side of minus 2, clearly I have positive things. Yeah, minus 2 ex is excluded as a solution, and we may look further on the set of reals. So also we see a positive and a zero sign, a minus 1, 1. So minus 1 is included as a value, and 1 is excluded. Yeah, so so finally we have 2 is included and on the right hand side of, of 2 we are in the positive area. So this gives the a good sign. So as a solution we find all x's inside the interval minus infinity minus 2 where 2 minus 2 is excluded. So we write it, this interval as an op with open brackets on the left hand side and the right hand side. Union that means that we have to add something still. Uh, the set minus 1, minus 1 is, is included, so we write a square bracket and the open bracket on the right hand side for the 1. Union, 2 included, so 2 infinity, so we write a square bracket on the left hand side and an open bracket on the right hand side.